Hey guys! I think there is no doubt that Lee Chong Wei, Lin Dan and Kento Momota are exceptional players and I think they all brought the game to the next level in their own way. I got asked many times to analyze the footwork of these kind of players, so I decided to give my point of view on the footwork of those three and also the, my point of view what makes them so special. And I will also give you some ideas for your training, how you can work on stuff um, like the things Kento, Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei are doing on court and I hope you're excited about this one. So let's dive into it, the footwork of Lee Chong Wei, Lin Dan, Kento Momota. Okay, let's start out with Lee Chong Wei, the recently retired legendary men's singles player from Malaysia. And I think there's no question that he's probably one of the fastest or the fastest um, player on court ever. And a huge role played his explosiveness, especially during the start and moving out of the corner. I talked about it in the tutorials about starting and recovering, but what makes him even more special in my eyes is his change of pace and especially the rhythm when he's running on court. So when you watch Lee Chung Wei playing, it doesn't seem like he's using so much energy. He's only using energy when he's starting and in between um, the landing in the corners and the start, he's, it seems like he's walking on court or he's flowing and not using any energy. I think a perfect example is when he's playing a high lift or a high clear and then he's totally relaxed when he moves back towards the center of the court and when the other one is hitting a smash, a clear, whatever, then he starts so explosive and is high at the shuttle again. And that is really, really tricky if you try that from that high position doing a really fast start. But I think that is a key to be fast on court and still getting breaks in between every shot. So um, that is in my eyes is the thing that Lee Chong Wei is doing so brilliant. There are some rallies from him where he's um, lifting the shuttle from the net and then moving backwards like this, turning around and then be ready. And I think that is crazy. That is also something you can try and you will see how very difficult it is to be that relaxed, like moving so relaxed, turning around and suddenly starting explosive, getting, getting your center of gravity down to the ground. And that is the thing I would try to work on or practice on if you want to get um, more efficient and more explosive, just like Lee Chong Wei is. There are good exercises for that, especially I think exercises where there is a change of pace. So where you can um, sometimes play fast shots where you have to recover fast. And then you have also shots where you play a long shot high to the back and have that time to recover. And then also try to focus on really relax after your high and long shots. So there's one exercise where two feeders are standing at the net. You play everything back to the net and at one point um, you can also play a high lift or a high clear and from then on the two feeders go into a position where one is at the back and one is at the front. And then after that long shot try to be relaxed for a short moment and then be explosive because you'll probably be in defense after that clear or after that lift. You can also practice it by just starting the exercise one against two and the two are standing behind each other and you're always in a defensive situation so you start with a long serve and then you have to defend the other ones are attacking and try always when you play the lift move backwards relaxed and then start explosive again when the smash is coming and try to feel that you're safe energy after those high clears high lifts um, in between the start and the recovery. So the next player I want to talk about is uh, Kento Momota from Japan. At this moment when I record this video, he is number one in the world. He's won almost all the big tournaments this year. And he also is exceptional in one way and that in my eyes is control. He can play such a high pace, but still always has control um, about his footwork and about uh, the shots he's playing. And I think when I see him, what he's doing brilliant and why he's so good and can move with such a high pace and control is that so many times he's landing and hitting the shuttle at the same time, especially in the rear court. Many players do the mistake that they always try to hit when they are high up in the air at the highest point. And of course that makes sense if I want to attack, if I want to play a winning shot. But in many cases it's really hard to score from the rear court. And the problem is, if I hit at the highest point, it takes some time to land. And when I'm landing, the shuttle is already at, my, um, at the other side. My opponent can play it and it's a lot harder and I have to be a lot faster um, to recover and 
most of the times if he's just playing a short defense I will be very low at the net and I will be in a defensive situation. So if you have a look at Kento Momota many times he's just landing and hitting the shuttle at the same time and that helps him to move out of the corner quickly and be higher at the net or yeah just be higher and faster at the next shuttle and by that he can keep the pace extremely high and still have control um, over yeah, his shots and his footwork. There's an exercise at the moment. We also call it the Momota exercise because it's all about landing and hitting at the same time. It's quite easy. Um, you play singles without the front court and most likely that will create very fast rallies with a lot of pace when, you're not, when you cannot play close to the net. And you always have to land and hit at the same time. If you hit when you're in the air or if you see that your opponent hits when he's in the air you get the point instantly so you have to avoid that and you will see that in some situations that is probably really tricky if you're not used to it but if you're good at it and if you land at the same time a hit and land at the same time you will see that you will um, be able to play a much higher pace during the rally and in general that will also improve your game and movement on, in, in singles um, dramatically. Last but not least Let's have a look at the arguably greatest player of all times, Lin Dan from China. I don't want to talk about some details of his footwork, or of his uh, foot position, starting position, but I want to talk about the thing that in my eyes sets him apart from most or almost all other players, especially during his prime, and that is his ability to read the game and his ability to anticipate. A lot of players say that he, or a lot of people say that it looks so smooth, efficient, how he moves on court, and he doesn't have to use so much correction steps. Like I already talked in the starting tutorial about um, you should always choose a position for starting um, that allows you to start quickly to that corner. But it's really hard always to know where the shuttle is coming or to read the game so you know where the shuttle is coming. But he is so extremely good, and in most cases, his foot position is right, he doesn't have to do any correction steps before he can start to the corner and that makes him so fast on one hand and also so efficient. Because these correction steps, for example if I think the shuttle goes there and then it comes there, this one here costs a lot of time and also a lot of energy and when you look at him he doesn't have to do that so many times and that is his big advantage in my eyes. So how can you practice anticipation and how can you get a better understanding uh, of the game? And the crucial thing here is you won't learn that with throwing shuttles or multi-shuttle feeding because then you don't have to read any movement of your opponent, you don't have to read any situation, the shuttles are just coming always from the same place and you just run and in most, most cases just switch off your head. So you have to use a flying shuttle where you can read the movements of your opponent and where you also have to analyze where is he standing, what options does he have, and that will also give you a better understanding of the game and will help to improve your anticipation skills. In my eyes, the key to a better anticipation is making experiences. These experiences you only make when you play a shuttle and your opponent plays that shuttle back and you have to try to read it early. Don't always wait in the middle until the shuttle is already in the air and you know exactly where to go. Maybe try to guess a little bit earlier with your foot position where the shuttle will come. And many times you will have to correct in the beginning, but always when you guess wrong, that will get you one step closer to a better anticipation and to a better ability to read the game or to read the shots of your opponent. A very basic exercise to start out with is just doing a high serve and your opponent plays a clear or a drop and your goal is to be as high as the shuttle as you can. So don't wait until he's already hitting the shuttle before you make your split step, but start as early as you think you have a clue if he's playing long or short. If you always wait until he already um, hits the shuttle, then you will be really low at the net and you will have a lot of pressure in the rear court. Try to read his movements and then see maybe if he's slowing down early, then you can already lean forward and go for the drop shot or in the other way, if he looks a little bit tensed with his body, then he will probably play clear. So already choose a starting position that will bring you fast to the rear court. You can do that with all kinds of shots. So also um, your opponent can, can play a straight smash or cross smash and you have to read his movement and see, is he playing straight or is he playing cross? And 
try really to analyze all kinds of his body position and also where he's hitting the shuttle and that will give you hints what he will probably play um, or what he will probably not be able to play. Of course you can practice it also in um, a game or in different kind of games where you try to anticipate early but a normal game without any special rules makes it really difficult in the beginning to um, yeah, get these experiences that I talked about. A good way to practice it in uh, match-like situations or match-like games is that you limit the options of the players. So you say, okay, from the rear court, round the head corner, you can only play straight clear or cross drop. So when, always when you play your opponent there, you already know he only has these two options. And if I'm really good at reading his movement, reading what he's playing, then I will have a big advantage because he cannot play all four corners. And by that, you can also uh, try to practice and improve your uh, anticipation skills. And the better you get, the more options you can give your players or can give yourself during these exercises and during these games. Okay, guys, this was my view of those three exceptional top players. And don't get me wrong, all top players are really good at anticipating. They have a lot of control during the rally and they also have a lot of explosiveness and a good rhythm during their running. But I think those three are really, really great in that three areas. And I hope you also have some ideas now how you can also improve um, your footwork and your footwork technique if you're already on a higher level and want to try to um, do some more advanced stuff. So I hope this video helped you. If you liked it, it would be super cool if you uh, hit the likes button and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, um, good time to do it now. I hope I see you in the next video. So far, bye bye.